Today I would like to talk about the following topic. This is my hand. This is my head. My nose. I have no discussion that this is belonging to me. This body is my body. And possibly you feel your body to be your body and nobody else's body. But possibly this feeling of ownership is a feeling that we construct every second of our lifetime in our brain. It is not given by nature, it is constructed. And if it is constructed, can we change it? The answer is yes. Let's make a very, very simple experiment. Incredibly simple. If you read more about it, just go to your computer and type in rubber hand illusion. You will see a lot of nice videos of this very simple illusion. You can test it on yourself. It works. What you need is a rubber hand. I don't have a rubber hand here, but I've drawn you a hand, a very simple one. Let's suppose I am the subject of the experiment. There is a little wall here. There is a rubber hand placed here. It's a three-dimensional rubber hand, incredibly simple. And it's put placed here, and it's absolutely easy for me to see that this is not my body. This is made of rubber, an artificial hand. So the experimenter tells me, this is a rubber hand, just look at this hand. And please put your hand here. Are you able to see your hand? And I say, no, I cannot see my hand. Okay, the experimenter says, let's start. Now comes a person who has a stroking pen in both hands. With one hand, they stroke the thumb of the rubber hand. And simultaneously, they stroke my thumb. So I'm looking at the stroking movements on the thumb of the rubber hand and I'm feeling the same movements and the same touch on my real hand. They go with the index finger, my index finger, middle finger, my middle finger, etc. I did not expect a strong illusion. I tell you, my illusion was there after 25 seconds. I suddenly had the feeling of, this is my hand. And when you test subjects, you can show that the temperature of your real hand drops by four degrees within a minute. That means your body is reducing the blood flow into your real hand because this is now part of your body. That means so fast you incorporate something else into the, your body schema with something so simple. The only thing that you have to do is to use the language of your brain. So what is the language of your brain? The language of your brain is synchronicity of nerve impulses. When the visual aspect of stroking is synchronous, with the felt aspects of stroking. You have nerve cells that are synchronously active, visual cells, somatosensory cells. And these nerve impulses are jointly coming together in the brain, creating the feeling of, this is part of my body. That means you can change the way you think about your own body. You can even go further. Swiss scientists have done a beautiful experiment. What they did was they asked subjects to enter their laboratory and put on virtual reality glasses. The only thing that these people could see was 
to see themselves standing in front of them with the back towards them. It's very simple. There was a camera behind them, taking the picture of, their, of them standing in the land. So that's what these people saw. They saw themselves standing in front of them. Obviously, they understood that this is just the picture of the camera and not themselves. It's just a camera picture. Now comes the trick. The Swiss scientists took a long stick and stroked the subjects at their back. And what the people saw during their virtual reality device was the same stroking movement at the back of the person in front of them. A synchronous feeling of somatosensory input and the visual aspect of seeing this in front of them. And what subjects report is, it feels like also standing there. So being in front of you, not here, in front of you. This is very strange. Does this reflect also diseases of the human brain, where people, for example, after brain damages, have changes in the way they um, perceive their own body? Yes. Especially after lesions of the right part of the brain. Some patients report that this is not my hand. It's not my hand. It's the hand of somebody else. That means after the brain lesion, people can have the feeling of not being able to accept their own left hand as part of their body. In most extreme cases, some people say, this left hand makes me unhappy. Please cut it off. It doesn't belong to me. It's not part of my body. In other patients with epileptic seizures, there are reports that these people say during an epileptic seizure that somebody moves into their body so that for a few minutes the left part of their body is in the control of somebody else and it is somebody else while this part of the body is me this part of the body is another person all of that shows that we construct ourselves. And this construction can change with lesions of the brain and with simple procedures like rubber hand illusions. That would now imply that the feeling of me, of myself, is something that can change in a second. Well, there is also some stability involved. It's a strange thing of being somebody else and being stably me. What does that mean? It means the following. I give you an example from a person in Switzerland again who unfortunately died a couple of years ago. She had a genetic disease. She was born without arms and without hands. So never in her life did she have a body schema including arms and legs. With other words, it's not that she had arms when she was young and they were, they were lost in an accident. She never ever had them. But now listen what she reports. She says, sometimes when I'm having a free time, I sit on my sofa, I put my legs onto the pillow, and I enjoy my life. Her legs 
onto the pillow. And when somebody comes into the room and sits on my legs that don't exist, in that second my legs disappear. But when the person stands up, the legs are there again. Scientists in the beginning did not believe her. They said it's just a fantasy of a woman who wants to have legs and arms. But she could prove that this is true. How was this proven? <laughs> they put this person into a brain scanner and say, please now move your arms or please now move your legs. Her brain activity in the motor planning regions is identical to the brain activity of people with legs and arms. Not in the primary motor cortex, but in the motor planning fields. And then scientists did the critical test. They used a system that is called transcranial magnetic stimulation, abbreviation TMS, with which you put a coil onto a certain part of the, of the skull and then give an electric pulse. This is then translated into a magnetic field that goes into your skull and then again creates an electric field in your brain. With this, you can activate certain parts of your cortex. Now they said to this woman, okay, look, Sometimes I will give you an electric pulse. Sometimes I will not give you an electric pulse. You will not know when I give you an electric pulse and when I don't give you an electric pulse. But you have to tell me whether your arms or legs move after one of these events, electric pulse given or maybe not given. So the person was sitting there the TMS device on its skull. And let's assume they said, now, but there was no impulse. And she said, my arms don't move. And then they said, now, but this time they gave an electric pulse. And she said, my right arm move, moves, my left leg moves, whatever the aim of the TMS system was. That means, she was born without arms and legs, but her brain had constructed arms and legs, and they never vanished, although she never had arms and legs. What does that all mean? It means we are born with a body in our brain, and this body in our brain has a certain stability over lifetime. But when we sometimes have a major brain injury, we can think that this is no longer our arm or hand. And when we speak the language of the brain, which is synchronicity, we can alter the body map of our body within seconds. At that level, I am a construction. And you, my friend, you're also a construction every second of your life.